hello everyone welcome again to uh, hybrid accounts youtube channel and today we are just going to proceed with our topic of working capital management and today we are just try we, are, we just start with the roles of working capital management so you should distinguish between roles and objectives of working capital management so when speaking of roles of working capital management since working capital is all about current assets and current liabilities so first we, we speak of managing current assets what role does the company have to play when managing current assets? Now, during managing current assets, you could have cash, you could manage cash, you could manage trade receivables like this one. That is the asset generated from credit sales, but also you could have to manage inventories. So when speaking of roles of capital management here, you have to take a look at one point after another. For example, when dealing with cash, you know cash is the lifeblood of the business. This is of not all. Cash is the lifeblood of the business. Without cash, the business can get going. Suppliers can be paid, something like that. But also we'll speak of management of trade receivables. And now, trade receivables form a significant part of assets and are used to set or maturing obligations when realized. You know, trade receivables, in contrast to cash, actually not constitute of cash, but can be converted into cash in the short term. So they can also be used to set or maturing obligations. But also, we have inventories. So among the roles, are it, it should be management of inventories actually do not worry about this because further into the topic we'll take a look at management of inventories cash as well as trade receivables so you just need to know about this all right it is also concerned with managing current liabilities other than just current assets as we just spoke as we just spoke up up here all right so managing current liabilities Small and medium entities, SMEs means small and medium entities use short-term liabilities as a major source of funds. You know, small and medium entities usually do not have the power as large entities, uh, let's say to seek funds from financial institutions like banks, but actual large firms can do that. But for small and medium entities, uh, they can fund themselves, they can finance themselves through trade payables, which is a short-term source of finance but also through managing bank overdraft. You know, bank overdraft is when uh, the bank allows you uh, to overdraw the amount that you have in the bank up to a certain limit. Of course, given the conditions and the usual, you, you have to put some security there. So it's just like that. All right, now let's go further and take a look at uh, disadvantages of having excess working capital. You know, working capital should not be too ex too much or should not be too low. So here are the disadvantages of excess working capital. You know, by having excess working capital, may it mean that you have a lot of uh, current assets. Having a lot of current assets can be a burden to the company because you could have invested a lot of a lot of money into working capital. And this would give you a disadvantage in that you would have to leave out the profitable investments. So, although excess working capital means a high level of liquidity, this is the advantage. Having excess working capital actually would give you a high level of liquidity so the company could be able to set to maturing obligations easily, but it had the following drawbacks. So, in case you are told advantages, you would have to speak of high level of liquidity. But the following are the drawbacks now. Let's go and take a look at the drawbacks first. Funds not being put to productive use and impact impact on the company's earnings. You know, if you insist on excess working capital, that means you insist on liquidity. If you insist on liquidity, that means there will be a negative impact on profitability, as profitable investments will be left. But also, we can just go and take a look at one element after another of these assets. For example, when speaking of inventory, we could say excess inventory could lead to high storage costs and obsolescence. Of course, you keep a lot of inventory, you have high storage costs, high costs of insurance, obsolescence, things like that. But also you could say when, when you go to actually other assets that are trade receivables, as we saw up there, diluted there, there could be a diluted focus on data control. That if you have a lot of trade receivables, a lot of data controlling that would be difficult and this could lead to bad dates. 
but also we say leakages in the system which might go unnoticed due to excess liquidity. Actually, there might, there might be leakages, there might be some theft of the, let's say, inventory, but the company would not be able to know easily just because uh, there are too much of assets. So it's something like that. But also you could say inefficiency in the organization ultimately affect market value of the firm. Of course, the company could be inefficient because having excess working capital would, would make the company fail to, to control all that working capital. And the failure to control all that could lead to inefficiency and inefficiency would lead to losses. The losses mean that the company is operating less effectively. If the company is operating less effectively, that would affect its profits. And by affecting profits, actually, the market value of the firm would go down because the operating capability would have fallen. So it's just like that. But also, we could go and take a look at disadvantages of inadequate working capital now. Working capital, as you saw in the goal or objective working of working capital management, is that actually working capital should not be too high and also should not be too low if it is too high it insists on liquidity but profitability becomes poor if it is too low it insists on profitability but liquidity becomes poor too. so you have to strike a balance so that's why today we're just trying to actually discuss uh, the impact the negative impact of uh, having excess or inadequate now let's go to inadequate now, before going to the disadvantages, you could say that although inadequate working capital means a high level of profitability, that means a lot of money has been invested into profitable investments and just a little has been retained for meeting working capital requirements, but it has the following drawbacks. So right now, we are just going to take a look at the drawbacks just like as follows. First, liquidity problem and hence lack of funds for fulfilling maturing obligations. If you have less working capital, that means that when maturing obligations arise, it could be difficult to fulfill them. It's, let's say it reaches the time that you have to pay uh, employees and suppliers but would not have cash. What could you do? That would be very difficult. Not have, let's say, not have current assets, even receivables. You know, you can have receivables not in, not in the form of cash, but you'd expect to receive cash in the short term, which will enable you uh, to meet maturing obligations. But now you won't be able because working capital will be low. But also we say negative impact on the entity's reputation due to possible failure of not meeting commitments. Of course, this could impact the entity's reputation negatively. And so it could damage the goodwill of the company, if any. All right. The brand of the company could be distorted too. So it's just like this. But also we say that no benefits of economies of scale. You know, when speaking of economies of scale, uh, if, we usually, normally, in a simple manner, just presume that we could reduce costs, we, we could make cost savings. For example, let's say by actually by, uh, we could say, uh, let's say you have a nice example of speaking of economies of scale is when, let's say, you produce a lot of items while the fixed costs remain the same, or even if it increases, it increases gradually such that the cost per unit falls. So there will be no benefit of economies of scale. But also we say impact on sales. How would sales be impacted due to inadequate adequate working capital? We say that sales could be below target prices on account of liquidity pressure because the company would be uh, actually would be in need of being liquid, would be in need of having cash. And in need of having cash while having trade receivables actually are uh, the company could sell goods at a cheaper prices with lower, lower margins. So it's just to, to get the cash. So that could be a negative impact on the sales. So it's just like that. And lastly, we could say delay in implementation of certain growth strategies affecting profit goals. Of course, it could cause a delay in implementation of certain growth strategies which could affect profit goals. Because when you have less working capital, that means that uh, you cannot, proceed to invest, to, you cannot proceed to implement your growth strategy because uh, they, they would actually require outflow of cash, outflow of funds in the short term, which the company would be able to hold. So it's just like that. The next uh, will be principles of working capital management. So until then, uh, let's just be together. If you haven't subscribed, you can subscribe for regular updates. Thank you very much. And until next time.